Hey garage heads, eight months ago, I bought the cheapest imported Land Cruiser in the US. This 1994 VX Limited came from Tatori, Japan to Cleveland, Ohio with only 137,000 kilometers on the clock or about 85,000 miles. Under the hood is a 4.5 liter gas inline six, just like the US models. The only major difference between this imported 80 and a US 80 is that it's right hand drive. Well, there are a lot of little things like the manual seats, rear air conditioning, headlights with integrated fog lamps, OEM brush guard with driving lights, center console cooler with an ice maker, sport suspension mode, but I'll do another video of all the cool stuff Japan put into their Land Cruisers. Today, we're gonna look at how much I put into my 80 series over the last eight months. But first, why would I buy an imported Land Cruiser? Well, Japan doesn't use road salt, so their vehicles aren't all rotted away like the ones around here. And usually they have lower mileage. For example, all the ones I found around here had over 200,000 miles. And they also read that Japanese owners tend to take better care of their vehicles, although we'll see that wasn't the case for this. I looked it over before buying and noted some cosmetic issues that I didn't mind fixing over time. It drove great. Well, on the way home from buying it, overdrive quit working and the light came on in the dash. After I got off the highway, I realized that second gear no longer worked. It was shifting straight from first gear to third gear. The first thing I did was let it sit in the driveway and ordered a factory repair manual. $123.53. After some research and diagnostic testing, I found one of the solenoids in the transmission wasn't working. It's a long job, so I bought all four to replace them all at once. $204.26. Link to the how-to video on that is in the description. I also needed the foreman in place gasket to put the pan back on, $26.03. The hood stayed up when it was at the dealer, but perhaps with the weather getting warmer, it kept falling down now. So I bought new hood shocks, $33.22. This was my new tow rig, so I bought a trailer harness for $66.35 and a Kurt receiver for $136.83. Next, I started sourcing some of the missing parts. I bought a left rear storage cover, $34.12. And the two ice cube trays were missing, so I found some for 30 bucks. The three-piece wheels that came on the 80 were in pretty rough shape. I scored a set of five OEM wheels and caps on eBay for $2.78 shipped. They need to be refinished, but that'll be a fun how-to project for a future video. I also found a set of third row seats on I Hate Mud for $363 shipped. It didn't match the rest of the seats in my 80, but I don't know if I'll ever find JDM third row seats here in the US. I don't mind the cloth. I thought that all my bad luck was out of the way after the transmission problem, but they say bad things happen in threes, and they're right. I was washing my 80 in the driveway and I bumped the driver headlight sprayer with a sponge and it basically disintegrated. The plastic was so brittle, it broke into so many pieces. So I had to order a new one from Dubai because that was never an option in the US. $69.17. Not horrible, but 70 bucks I would have rather put towards something else. Like rebuilding the front knuckles. It all started when I had the front diff oil seal go out and spray green goo grease everywhere. The new seal was only $10.60, but green goo is molly grease mixing with gear oil. And that means the axle oil seals aren't doing their job. And when I first bought this 80, there was a slight click from the burr fields when turning at full lock. They were getting a lot louder, so it was a good time to tear into the front knuckles. Two burr fields were $310, snap rings were $5.25, the knuckle build kit with wheel bearings was $185, and I needed a spring gauge to check bearing preload, $22.50, a brass drift set, uh, $34.99, I already had all the other tools, but spent about 18 bucks on grease. That was a big job, but it feels good to know it's done. Plus, I saved a lot on labor doing it myself. I'll put the link for that full rebuild in the description. So I went to install the third row seats one day to haul some passengers and took two more steps backwards. 
Uh, it turns out the receivers on the third row seats don't match the buckles in my 94 Land Cruiser. It turns out the cloth seats were from a 1991 and they use a different size buckle. So I had to find the matching third row gray seat belts from a 91 before I could use a third row, 75 bucks. Also, when I tried to fold the right third row seat up out of the way, it wouldn't go up all the way because of the wider rear panel covering the rear AC unit. Didn't see that one coming. Oh, and speaking of didn't see that coming, the seller said the washer fluid tank would leak and run dry after a couple of days. So I figured I'd just buy another used one on eBay. But no, the JDM one is different to accommodate for the extra motor for the headlight washers. It turns out it was leaking at the grommet for the motor and the grommet was used on other vehicles in the US. So it was only $6.04 at the local dealership. I feel like I won that round. However, while I had the washer tank out, I noticed some ugly rust hiding underneath it, like Ohio grade rust. You see, Tatori Japan is by the ocean. And if you Google Tatori Japan, one of the first things that comes up is sand dunes. And I imagine this thing spent a lot of time at the beach and in the dunes because there was so much sand inside this thing when I vacuumed it out. So it's seen some ocean salt water in its life. So my rust free 80 wasn't completely rust free, but I've repaired plenty of rust in my day. So I already had all the supplies to weld it up and get it sealed and painted. The thermostat was stuck open after a few months. So I got a new OEM one. $28.50. And then when I went to install it, I found that it didn't include the rubber gasket, $7.58. With winter right around the corner, I picked up three cans of fluid film to rust proof my 80, which you might've seen in a previous video, $34.99. And a rear wiper for $7.67. The last thing I bought for my 80 was a set of belt weather strip trim for all four doors because the original ones are brittle and peeling off of the metal mounting pieces. I'm holding off on installing these for now because I might see if I can get these windows to go up and down any faster with some silicone spray. I'd rather only tear into the doors one time if possible. These four pieces came to a total of $223.74. So that brings the grand total of parts for the first eight months I've owned my 80 series Land Cruiser to $2,373.62. And that's not including engine oil and filter, coolant, transmission fluid, oil for the transfer case, and front and rear diffs. So let's add on another 150 for those, and that brings a total to $2,523.62. We won't even get into how much I spent on fuel because that's not the reason you buy an 80 series Land Cruiser. Now, a good chunk of those overall costs were just baselining a used vehicle and finding pieces and parts that were missing, not things that were vital to keep it on the road. 2021 should be easier on the wallet. Uh, the biggest thing I have planned for 2021 is going through the cooling system and replacing every single hose. That should be fun. And there will be a video. As I've said before, I don't mind putting time and money into these old Toyotas because they are going up in value. And it's totally worth it to have this 80 series Land Cruiser as my daily driver. Consider subscribing for more 80 series videos and uh, check out my store. I've got some rad Yodi gear that you might like. Thanks for watching.